In the introduction video to this section on centroids, we mentioned that we would also examine the difference between a centroid, a centre of mass and a centre of gravity. So to remind ourselves, and a kind of an illustration, we could imagine having a seesaw at a playground and if you have two people of equal weight and equal distance from the pivot point of the seesaw, then the seesaw would remain in equilibrium. And this is kind of an illustration of this would be the centre of gravity or centre of mass of an object. You could also imagine for the same seesaw that we could have two boxes of identical size. So both of them having now the same centroid, the same distance from their centroid to the pivot point. But if one of the boxes is filled with rocks and the other is empty, just full of air, then we know that the seesaw will tip down on the heavier side. So if this was just centroids, the centroid of these two boxes together would be in the centre and therefore the seesaw would not tip. But if we consider the mass or mass times acceleration to give us weight, then the seesaw would not be in equilibrium and therefore would tip down. This kind of helps us explain the difference between centre of mass and, cent and centroid. So, just to recap, the centroid is where on a body is the geometric centre. So, just to do with the dimensions of a body. And we showed in the previous example how we could calculate the geometric centre of a composite body and show that it moved to between the two. Now we can also imagine we have a composite body now. And we'll show this example with numbers later. Where we could work out using the method we used in the previous example and tutorial problems that we could work out the individual centroids and from those individual centroids go on to calculate where our composite centroid of the section is. However, we could have exactly the same body and we'd like to know where the centre of mass is. And instead of worrying about the area, the geometric properties so much, now we're going to be a lot more interested in the mass and if you multiply by 9.81, the weight of these bodies. So if I have a box one that's quite light, I'll have a weight force W1 down the center of this box. And now if I have another box, box two, and now the mass or well, the mass density is much bigger, giving me a bigger mass, therefore giving me a bigger weight, W2, then you can imagine, especially if W1 is very light, but actually the centre of mass could be very close to the centre of the composite body, could be very close to the centre of mass of the entire body, and body 1, being very light, contributes to that in a much smaller manner and so we're going to write down mathematically what we mean by a center of mass or a center of gravity okay so here i've used weights i could also have used masses so m1 and m2 and for engineering mechanics most engineering mechanics that we will always be in a constant gravity field. We generally take this to be 
meters per second squared. And this is constant, or considered constant for most problems we assume. In physics, this most definitely is not the case, and gravity is not constant. But for most of our cases, whether we consider the mass of an object or the weight of an object, the only difference is a multiplication of 9.81, which cancels out with our calculation. So the center of mass and the center of gravity are identical for a constant gravity field. But the centroid is not equal to the center of mass because you could have a geometric center. So here, this geometric center in a completely different place to where the center of mass or center of gravity lies. So we're gonna go on now what we said in the last lecture but we had x bar and we had the summation of the lever arms to each of the individual rectangles we had or it could have been triangles or whatever shape multiplied by the areas of the individual shapes divided by the sum of all of the areas so the total area and this gave us the quantity, the geometric center, which we call the centroid. And we can also have another position as we've just shown. And let's call this C for centroid, just for this page so we can remember what we're talking about. Let's call X bar for the mass. Now would be the same procedure of taking moments so like being on a seesaw and now we have the distance to the center of a mass of a given box for instance and now multiplied by the mass of these individual boxes and then all divided by the total mass of the boxes and this would be called the center of mass or the center of gravity if we have a constant gravity field. So let's just illustrate what we mean there to make sure we're on the same page. So like we had for deriving the centroids, we have a number of boxes. Uh, let's make them random shapes, a sort of triangle. But each of these random shapes, this box here has a mass of M1. This has a mass of M2 and its center of mass is at this point. We have an M3. Again, we can identify that as being a triangle and a rectangle and the center of mass was round about here. And the center of mass of the triangle was here, one third and one third. That's M4. And if we want the x coordinate, we then have this, the lever arm from wherever we're taking moments to each of the lines of actions of these weights or masses. And we apply the same procedure as we did for centroids for calculating. And we're going to go on and give a proper example with some real numbers in there in the next video. Before we proceed on to the next video though, however, one little thing that might be of use is so far we know what the, for common shapes at least, we know where the centroid of a square section is. If the mass density is constant in this square, that will also be the center of mass or center of gravity of this square. And we said the same for a triangle. We know where the centroid is and therefore we can work out where the center of mass of this triangle is. And we can use the same ideas as we did for centroids, but multiplying by the mass density times the volume to give us the total mass. What you can do if 
with two clicks in a search engine is you can also find these geometric properties of lots of other random shapes so maybe it could be for an ellipse and it will tell you where the X is in this case obviously it's an ellipse so that's going to be halfway along but it will also tell you how far up you'd expect your Y bar to be and you can get the formula for the area of the ellipse so area of the ellipse uh, and this is completely off the top of my head so shoot me down in the comments if you like with pi of a b where a is also this half length and b is this total height of an ellipse uh, likewise for lots of other shapes and you can use this you can use the area to get yourself the total mass you need the area for the centroid calculations and you can get these values of where the x bar and y bar coordinates are remember however if you're working out the area of a composite shape and this composite shape now involves an ellipse off the edge of here you do need to remember where you're taking moments from and it's the total distance from where you're taking moments from not this distance here y bar okay and we'll move on to a numerical example on center of gravity